네, 정서... Welcome you back to Jongsan Forum 2021. Now we are just ahead of uh, one um, session uh, before the wrapping up or the closing of Jongsan Forum 2021. We have had a great and meaningful uh, sessions talking about the future of Earth and the humankind centering around the climate change. And while listening to the presentations delivered by a great uh, presenters, I just came up with a realization that I should uh, start. Uh, with the small actions in my daily lives uh, to make a contribution to uh, the uh, sustainable uh, environment creation. And enterprise uh, takes a big part of our society. It's a one of those major pillars that sustain our uh, society. And today we have uh, the guests from this enterprise sector, a corporate sector, uh, to uh, compose enterprise session. So please join us for uh, the remainder of the session and use the YouTube channel uh, to raise your questions if you have any. The last session, the enterprise session, will be delivered on the theme of the role of sustainable companies in carbon neutrality. I'd like to invite the co-chair of Jongsan Forum 2021, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Yu Jong Jun of SKENS for his opening remark of Enterprise Session. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. My name is Yu Jong Jun. At this uh, Jongsun uh, Forum 2021, uh, where we um, talk about lives in sustainable environment, uh, I am honored to be the, the, the co-host. It gives me a great honor for me to stand here to, as the co-chairman of the organizing committee. Um, and in particular, I'd like to extend my appreciation to the uh, presenters uh, for making their contributions. Uh, SK and POSCO are two uh, largest um, decarbon emitters of uh, Korea. And uh, we have uh, the top management representative uh, to talk about uh, um, their responsibilities. Um, as uh, corporations, and we do have a uh, um, panelist uh, that represents uh, the financial sector as well. And uh, for the moderator, uh, we have um, an attorney at law uh, from Kim and Zhang uh, Law Office, uh, who will be the moderators at today's discussion. And uh, I believe uh, that uh, the key the stakeholders uh, from the corporate sector of Korea are all here today. I extend my appreciation to all the participants for their contribution. And uh, the threat of COVID-19 continues, and uh, we had uh, um, new hopes and expectations for the year 2021. We faced with more challenges than ever before, and uh, the heat waves, the forest fires, and floods are affecting us. According to uh, the Guardian, um, there has been the more the, the forest fire than um, before, and we emitted more than 300 million tons of um, the carbon because of that. And as Dr. Che Jae-chan said yesterday in his keynote, in his, his lecture, um, we had more than we have more than 100 years of uh, recording uh, the global temperature, and uh, we have uh, top five uh, the, the years all being recorded within the last decade. And in the Gangwon province, uh, we had um, heavy the, the flood, and uh, there was high concentration of rain in a very localized region, uh, and it is also part of the, the climate anomaly. And because of that, um, the sustainable um, planet has become a very uh, important issue that, that we feel very close to our the, um, the life. This is not a, um, an issue that affects individual country. This is an issue that requires a global solidarity and cooperation. The P4G summit was held in Seoul in May of this year, and uh, at this uh, summit, uh, 
a global the soil declaration was adopted. This includes the global efforts to overcome the climate change, including accelerating the energy transition. And we have high, we are highly dependent on the export industry, and therefore this is a very important issue for us. In addition, the EU, EU to unveil in the Fit for 55, which is the draft of the carbon tax bill. This was released in July, and this requires a global response as well. And uh, we have a lot of asset um, under the, that is affected uh, because of that. Uh, and uh, this uh, asset needs to be uh, amortized. Uh, and uh, according to our statistics, uh, we believe that uh, um, there, um, the Korean national the investment assets exposed to nine high carbon industry in Korea amount to 411 trillion won. That they include individual the investments as well as corporate investments. And uh, again, we are highly dependent on exports, and uh, we emit large amounts of carbon. To, uh, and if uh, this carbon uh, border tax is to be adopted, uh, we are going to suffer a lot. GDP is likely to, to, to decrease and also export volume is going to decrease, but we are going to face more severe problem uh, on top of that, and we are facing this imminent uh, challenge. This is a, crisis, a serious uh, crisis situation, to, and this requires um, our immediate uh, response. We need to change our activity, and this is indeed a real risk for the businesses. This is not just an ideological or declarative or rhetorical concept. This is a situation that requires immediate response and actual response. This is a matter of life and death for the businesses, and therefore we're not just being subjected to regulations. We need to be a part of the conversation, and we need to come up with new responses. We need to uh, uh, take on the um, actions, initiate the situation, and uh, businesses are already uh, acting, uh, taking actions. Uh, for example, to, uh, in the energy sector, we emit large amounts of, of the um, carbon in April of 2021, uh, we decided uh, to uh, find uh, responses on our own. And as an initiative, we established a uh, private uh, sector, energy sector initiative. This is an uh, energy alliance for carbon neutrality. And uh, we believe that investment and the technological development are the, the way uh, it would provide a solution for us. And we joined hands together with the government to uh, come up with uh, the solution. Now, in such event, at the individual company's level, what can we do to promote carbon neutrality? Are our efforts um, turning out to be effective? Um, we have, uh, have been given a lot of thought to that. This um, um, is uh, something we share, not only at the top management level, but uh, also at uh, our staff level. At the P4G Source Summit, uh, Chairman Chet Tewon uh, gave us a keynote speech. He gave us a uh, uh, proposed for a mechanism to, to internalize uh, this, uh, um, these efforts. We need to provide um, a measure, to provide incentive, and to come up with collaboration. To, and he made such a proposal at uh, the P4G Summit. Let me uh, give you some uh, ideas uh, from this discussion. And this is part of the keynote address uh, made by Chete Won at the P4G Summit. Now, if so, how should um, companies internalize uh, these external defects? And uh, how can we uh, come up with a mechanism to change the perception and their behavior and effectively internalize uh, the externalities? I like to come up with a mechanism. I have three keywords for you today. First is measure. Second is incentivize. Incentivize. Uh, and the third is to collaborate. The first element in operating a new mechanism is measurement. One of the decisive reasons why internalization does not occur is that companies are not aware of what and how much externalities arise. 
So, the, without um, the, so the companies should uh, quantify the wide-reaching specific impact on the environment by quantifying them into monetary terms, and that should be done, as in the case of the financial accounting, uh, through environmental accounting. And the externalities on the environment should be um, assessed. And by doing so, companies will be able to develop a clear understanding about the environmental factors and manage and improve the environmental problems that they cause. By objectively identifying the environmental performance of a company, the government can come up with a feasibility evaluation. Regrettably, it, um, um, measurement cannot solve environmental problems on its own. So even if we can quantify the externalities through the measurement, uh, we need incentives to internalize them. Without incentives, companies will turn away. And therefore, we need to use the results to provide incentives uh, for the environment uh, improving effect. The incentive needs to be paid out for the mechanism to get going. If that happens, environmental issues will no longer be just externalities. As a catalyst, incentives will turn environmental issues into investment and profit-making opportunities. And the incentive system that I propose is not just about renewing, reviewing the planned investment amount to pay subsidies in advance. Instead, we need to look at the project outcome. How did they improve the environment? Incentives should measure up uh, the investment performance of the company after completion. Lastly, to, uh, when it comes to incentives uh, system, some may have questions about the financial resources for this uh, system. And for this, uh, we need cooperation at the global level. The incentive uh, payment uh, should not be confined to, to a given uh, region. In, instead, we need to develop it as an internationally accepted credit. For example, if uh, companies uh, come up with a system to, to uh, uh, hold, uh, resolve the problem, to, and uh, um, we should come up with a system where they can voluntarily resolve the system, to, so that they can we can maintain, expand growth, and address environmental issues simultaneously. And of course, companies cannot sit idle until solutions come out. With a strong commitment, uh, companies should take resolute action to, to improve the environment. And this is a new entrepreneurial spirit needed uh, for the new era. And um, President Chetewon uh, spoke uh, in his capacity as the chairman of the Korea in this, um, KCCI. And uh, he used a lot of jargon, to, but I think um, there was a student uh, that raised a point. Uh, uh, there was a lot of words, uh, but uh, little action is taken. To, uh, he it, uh, the issue about the carbon, to, uh, the coal-based power production to, uh, has to do with the cost. If people believe it's cheaper to. to generate electricity through the, the carbon-based uh, power plant based power plants. Uh, Coal-based power plants is about five cents. If you look at the externalities, uh, because it emits uh, carbon emissions, it is carbon, and it's not included in the cost. If you include the externalities altogether, it's going to be at least eight cents. So carbon, uh, coal the power generation so, uh, is um, the cost of coal power generation is 13 cents as opposed to 5 cents that they claim. And five, if it's 13 cents, it's much larger, larger than the cost incurred in the using recyclable, the, the, the reusable energy. And uh, therefore, the, the argument is very clear that the coal power plant uh, is quite expensive because it's 13 cents as opposed to 5 cents. So measurement should be made. And this is a good uh, way for us to start. Uh, lastly, I like to say that um, success or failure um, 
where carbon neutrality requires long-term vision and goal setting based on global cooperation. And, uh, I sincerely hope that um, the, this session will serve as a good starting point. Uh, I sincerely hope that we will uh, give um, shed light on uh, the sustainability uh, so that we can give a good starting point for the sustainable role of companies in the carbon neutrality era. Thank you very much for your kind uh, uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, as was mentioned, uh, there are roles to be played uh, by corporations. Uh, I'm sure that businesses are, one, um, are they're paying attention to what they should do, and this is an um, area, the area to, where many to, um, play different stakeholders are paying attention to. Uh, there should be to, uh, active uh, discussions uh, to define the rules to be uh, played by themselves, and we are very interested to see what uh, the businesses have to say in the roundtable discussion. And uh, for the roundtable, uh, we'd like to now invite uh, the panelists uh, to take the seats at the. Thank you very much. We have uh, the enterprise session presenters uh, seated on the stage. Let me introduce them one by one. And please uh, welcome them with a big round of applause as I introduce them one after another. We have Mr. Kim Sung, head of Environment and Energy Research Institute at Kim and Jong. Thank you. Next to him is Mr. Lee Hyung-hee, President of SK Supex Council's Social Value Committee. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Thank you. Next, let me give you this Yi-woo, Ri Ji woo Head of Safety and Environment Division of POSCO. Mr. Park Song-hyun, Chief Strategy and Sustainability Officer of Shinan Financial Group. Thank you very much. I would like to give microphone to Mr. Kim hyung woo who will be moderate at the enterprise session. Thank you very much. This is my first time to visit Jongsan, and on my way here, I was pretty impressed with the beautiful scenery and the beauty of nature. When there was the inauguration ceremony of a carbon neutrality committee, I actually saw the beautiful scenery of the city of Cheongsan while watching the video clip, but I didn't actually feel it in person, and particularly the scenery that you command from inside and the scenery that you can see outside in person is quite different, and it's a great honor for me. Uh, to be a moderator of this great uh, session of enterprise session. Um, I believe the enterprise session under the uh, theme of the role of sustainable uh, companies in carbon neutrality is very timely. We are talking about different enterprises, uh, the, uh, the one from financial sector, one from a manufacturing sector, and one in commodity sector. So I'd like to listen to the presenters, uh, I mean presentations from three presenters from different um, industry sectors, and then I will wrap up and um, after having a quick Q&A session. Could you please uh, upload the slide that I prepared? I spent the last 30 years in energy and environment sector. I uh, used to be a business person um, before I uh, actually joined Kim and Zhang. I used to work at uh, POSCO before I joined Kim and Zhang. And we all know that there is a big uh, transition uh, being made. The coal-based carbon energy source uh, was a kind of the easiest uh, energy source that we uh, used to use. So if we stop using this uh, carbon uh, energy source, it means that we need to go back to uh, the state uh, that we were in 60 years ago. And around 25% uh, countries had the decarbonization horizon like uh, 18 months ago, but now the number has risen to 75%. Uh, the Vice Chairman Yu uh, pointed out uh, that 
And the fee for 55 um, is uh, the EU's uh, energy, particularly the carbon energy reduction target um, by 2035. And the US also uh, came up with a very ambitious uh, plan. And also there are uh, movements being made in, in the National uh, Congress uh, in the United States to make a revision on um, the energy-related laws to respond to uh, future demands. And also CBAM, uh, uh, car Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, is uh, one thing that we need to consider. Uh, the steel uh, product which is being exported by Korea to uh, the European countries should comply with uh, the environment-related regulations in order not to be punished with uh, the, the penalties or kind of fines. And actually, as we can see, uh, the European countries and the U.S. Uh, came up with a kind of the environment-related uh, laws and the regulations in the area of uh, carbon energy source uh, reduction um, in, in a quite similar line. And from the perspective of uh, the Asian uh, region, we need to take a look at what's happening and what kind of moves are being made in China and Japan. China came up with a declaration of a carbon neutrality. And as we all know, China is using the half of coal, uh, I mean, coal production um, as of today. So uh, you may wonder how uh, China will achieve its economic growth without using carbon energy source or coal. And you may wonder what, um, where that confidence comes from, uh, what kind of technological base that China can use. From the perspective of um, end user um, energy consumption, Two-thirds of the energy source that we use is the electricity. And also, uh, the technology matter a lot in this power is generation. And if all, uh, actually, we are talking about three key technologies or the core te technologies. And there are top 10 uh, technology companies provide those three major areas. The EV battery, and uh, the PV modules and uh, seven out of top 10 PV module uh, companies are the Chinese companies. And if you take a look at uh, this graph, you will see that actually the Chinese companies uh, dominate all these three, uh, the innovative technological uh, sector, uh, the, the EV battery uh, PV module and wind turbine. And let me brief you on what kind of uh, moves are uh, being made by uh, Japan. I'm not saying that uh, the Korea is lagging behind Japan. Actually, J uh, Japan is faced with a similar situation with that of Korea. The Japan needs to secure the stability of electricity distribution network in order to replace uh, the energy sources into a more sustainable energy sources. And in order to achieve uh, that uh, goal, actually Japan needs to connect its electricity distribution network with the neighboring countries. But as we all know, uh, that is not the reality for both uh, Korea and Japan. Japan came up with an ambitious uh, target of uh, increasing the proportion of renewable energy uh, to 36 to 38% uh, is by 2030. Korea is moving toward a similar direction. Carbon Neutrality Committee was inaugurated and the Korean government came up with a specific uh, strategy to achieve net zero by 2050 as well as its plan uh, to accomplish NDC by 2030. And one of the measures being considered by the Korean government is to legislate uh, the carbon energy source reduction. A few days ago, the subcommittee in the National Assembly actually passed the proposal uh, for uh, the basic law for uh, 
decarbonize a society uh, as a response to climate uh, crisis. And according to that a basic law, there is a specific blueprint uh, for the uh, Korean uh, government to cut down its carbon um, emission uh, with a specific milestone, uh, such as the 2030 and the 2050. Uh, we all know that government policy will give impact on um, the accomplishment of uh, carbon neutrality or net zero uh, targets. And I believe that also enterprise can uh, play a role in making contribution to the realization of such goals. For the past six months, the wealth management companies, some of the wealth management companies came up with the declaration of carbon neutrality. And as you can see in this figure, the AUM of, of the global wealth uh, managers which declared carbon neutrality is 43 trillion won, and the entire global AUM of wealth management companies is 110 trillion dollars, rather. And what uh, do you know what uh, it means that a wealth management company declares carbon neutrality? It is not limited to the carbon neutrality of the company itself, rather. Uh, it means that the wealth manager uh, company uh, management company will engage in and the company that it invests in with regard to uh, the accomplishment of carbon neutrality. So if this goes, uh, uh, I mean, as it is, then the enterprises will have no choice but to follow this carbon neutrality trend, whether they like it or not. And in batches, are supposed to pursue uh, profits. So you may wonder why these wealth management companies uh, actually campaign for carbon neutrality. In the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, recently, The companies, the top company, the top companies which perform well in terms of ESG or uh, carbon emission reduction, show increase in uh, their market capitalization as a kind of consensus made in, in the financial sector. And also, the, another trend that I want to point out here is uh, that there has been increasing number of shareholders and stakeholders request for carbon neutrality or the carbon emission reduction. Let me take an example of ExxonMobil, a representative uh, petrochemical company in the United States. There was a board of directors meeting in uh, May 26. An, an activist uh, hedge fund made a request for the replacement of independent directors in, in the BOD meeting of ExxonMobil. And actually that an activist hedge fund came up with the proposal for new uh, uh, three independent uh, directors and actually they were replaced. Uh, I mean, actually the existing and uh, independent directors were replaced with those proposed ones. We are talking about the ISS and CAPES or some pension fund uh, managers uh, that uh, actually agreed to such kind of proposal. And another uh, case in point is the, the ruling made by a Dutch court against Shell. Uh, the, actually, the court make it mandatory for the company to uh, cut down its uh, CO2 score one, two, three emission by 45%. Uh, it made it provisionally enforceable. And this kind of proposal or the request can be made to uh, any company in the world. There could be certain measures that the companies can take to deal with such kind of request. The first one is they can change or restructure their portfolio and they can also purchase uh, the clean energy uh, without uh, changing their business model or also they can make investment in new and low carbon product uh, while you're expanding and the deca 
decarbonization boundary. I would like to bring your attention to the upcoming uh, the UN uh, Climate uh, Change Conference of the uh, Parties, which will be held in um, November this year. And during uh, the COP meeting, there will be a discussion and the finalization of uh, the international information disclosure criteria uh, for the uh, companies and also each countries will come up with their raised target for uh, the greenhouse gas emission. It seems that a lot of enterprises are moving toward uh, carbon free energy source or uh, the carbon and the emission or the CO2 emission reduction. So during the COP26 uh, meeting, such kind of guidelines and the criteria will be finalized. So please uh, take a look at uh, what kind of uh, decisions will be made during uh, the COP meeting and other uh, related stuff, uh, meeting talks. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. And now so I um, put on my hat as the moderator of this session. Um, I'm not no longer the presenter. I'd like to um, now proceed. Uh, I request uh, the panelists to speak for 10 minutes. And um, Mr. Lee from the Postco, so excuse me, my apologies. Uh, Mr. Lee hyung of the SK side uh, is responsible for the group, um, the SK group. And uh, um, Mr. Lee si um, is going to talk about the Postco experience as the major manufacturer. And uh, we believe that we um, have a complete lineup because uh, Mr. Park Sun-young then is going to talk about the financial industry. So now I'd like to ask Mr. Lee hyung to begin uh, this discussion. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lee um, hyung and I am affiliated with the SK Group. And uh, this is uh, my title of my presentation is uh, Through Carbon Neutrality, we are the aspiring to, to um, find out what the future holds for the businesses. At the Jongsun Forum, I believe uh, that uh, sustainable the earth is the major theme that you pursue at the Jongsun Forum. And I remember that sometime last year, uh, we had some ideas about the environment. And um, also, two years ago, we had our ideas about the environment. I wanted to uh, focus on that. If we go back two years, uh, of course, at the time, environment was a very important issue. But I believe that uh, environment issue was regarded to be an agenda of the, the NGOs, the non-government organizations, or the, those of the progressive groups in the society. But now, I believe uh, that uh, environment and uh, carbon neutrality are the terms uh, that have become the uh, important buzzwords for all of us, and not just as, as special segments within the Korean society. And I believe uh, that uh, we need to ask ourselves whether the, our lives can be sustainable. So the. I think that there is a paradox here because I believe that when it comes to sustainable earth, that we do agree that we need to promote um, the activities that, that contribute to the sustainable the planet. But if we have to give out our profit um, for the sake of the earth, or we have to make massive investment because we have to ensure sustainability, companies will be reluctant. Um, and, but we have to ask ourselves about uh, what, uh, how it will impact the future of the businesses. If it's going to impact sustainability of the businesses, then uh, companies may choose to act differ. And um, um, debating for the debate's sake and um, debating for the sake of the sustainability of the businesses, these two things to, are regarded to be two different things, but now they are closely related. Uh, and uh, why is such a mechanism being uh, found within our society? I think uh, the efforts can begin from the financial sector, from the capital market per se, but uh, more fundamentally, I think we have to go back uh, to the consumer's level. Uh, consumers are the, the general public uh, and the vote, uh, the, um, the people who vote, uh, the voters. 
So, and I believe that the perception that the voters or the general public has um, is changing. And uh, climate change has been mentioned a lot by the keynote speaker and uh, others. Uh, and I do believe that climate change is, uh, um, is changing the ideas we have about, about the future. And consumers are beginning to recognize that, and the policymakers are responding to such changes. And uh, Kim Sung Wook from the Kim Hyun Law Office talked about overseas legislation cases, and I have been uh, collecting uh, news articles lately, and uh, I wanted to, to um, update the, those materials uh, as well. I wanted to make a presentation, but you have to, up to, uh, to make updates every every uh, few days uh, in a given month because new regulations are being put in place, new laws are being enacted. And uh, from the capital markets uh, point of view, such changes in the regulations, uh, um, the capital market wants to ensure that companies respond to such changes in the legislation and in the new uh, regulations being installed. If companies do not respond, the capital market will be reluctant to extend loans. And companies have, are clearly becoming aware of this new, new development, a new situation. Uh, so uh, it just uh, struck me that uh, um, these days uh, there is a competition amongst the powers uh, for energy, the, um, the supremacy. And um, we talked about the fourth industrial revolution. We believe that uh, the AI is going to be deployed, and this is going to be based on the ICT technology. And we said that this is going to be revolutionary. And of course, uh, these uh, uh, kind of changes are very important within the, the fourth industrial revolution. But uh, uh, the decarbonization and energy transition are going to impact us in a more significant manner, and they're going to come to us uh, more faster than uh, the AI based Based, uh, changes. Uh, remember the days of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, it was led by major powers, and it was based on the coal, uh, the, the and the mass uh, the production that based on the coal power generation and resulted in wealth being accumulated to very few individuals, and this has led to the wealth of a nation and uh, thus the rise of the power. And this has led to uh, the hegemon um, arising. And people who had the, the hegemons, uh, the people who had hegemon hegemonic power, that began to rule as uh, a very powerful states, uh, and they subordinated uh, less powerful states. And uh, likewise, the decarbonization is taking so the, it uh, taking place so in a, in a rapid manner, and the changes are uh, just it's a massive changes going on, and we are already mired in a fight amongst the powerful the, uh, players. The United States uh, was uh, neglecting on this issue. The EU is uh, taking the lead, and now the U.S. is coming back, and they are taking part in the competition. And against this uh, backdrop, China t it uh, seems to believe that there is no reason for uh, China to uh, stand aside. 75% uh, of all the uh, uh, solar powers uh, technologies are being held by China, to, and 55% of all the, the wind power technologies are held by China. And uh, so this is the overall uh, the competition uh, landscape, uh, and uh, we have to be a part of this competition. There's no way out for us. Uh, this is like a marathon. The marathon has begun already. We don't want to take it, the marathon, but uh, major the athletes have already begun the fight in this marathon. Although we do not want to take part in this marathon, although we're not ready the physically, uh, but already the fight has begun, and the, the, these, uh, this hegemony fight has uh, begun to, with rationale, and uh, there's this large, um, uh, the the. This is, uh, this is a competition at large, and uh, uh, we are really looking at this huge uh, trend. Um, and we are wondering what uh, we have to do against this backdrop. Now, uh, let's take a microscopic view for the company's uh, perspective. Uh, many of the Korean businesses 
believe that, that uh, this is the way forward and a lot of cost will be incurred. Large investments will be required. They need technology. And this is a difficult a difficult path for us. But if they choose not to take the path, uh, that's going to see bomb dropped on us. Uh, the C bomb is uh, the CBAM, acronym for the uh, the carbon border adjusting mechanism, and this is going to incur a lot of cost for the companies. And uh, companies will have to uh, take uh, on one of these two options. Uh, there's no middle way for companies. Uh, if you choose to stay in the middle way, it's going to be more difficult for the companies later. Now, this is a situation. To, um, in which you have to promote the cause and you have to, to try to find some benefits by the promoting that cause. Or you could choose to um, obtain practical output and try to, to add some rational to it. So it's, um, it's, it's something that, that you will have to aspire to try to achieve. I remember this um, picture. This is an athlete from Tonga. Uh, during the Winter Olympics at the Pyeongchang Games, the, he the, was the flag hoister of the Tonga the national team. And he took part in the Summer Olympic Games and the Tokyo Olympic Games as well. He took part as uh, the, the Taekwondo uh, player. And uh, he also wanted to play the kayak, but uh, uh, compete under the kayak game, but he was not able to do so. What he wants to do is to take as many um, take part in the, the Olympic Games as frequently as many, in many times as possible. He's not able to, to um, compete in other field, and therefore he chose to uh, take part in the taekwondo game. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, the company has clear objectives, and the company uh, may be able to maybe try to the resort to various means to achieve this objective and actions are required to this end. Uh, in the, the previous uh, days, uh, companies are used to competing under the, uh, the carbon environment. Now the companies need to come up with new objectives and this in order to uh, achieve these objectives, the companies need to uh, resort to different means. Uh, for this, athletes uh, trying to learn the Taekwondo must have been a, a challenge, but uh, he uh, learned the Taekwondo anyway. And I think uh, companies can, likewise, I think companies can uh, uh, think about different ways of achieving the objectives. It has to do with um, the, the sustainability of the planet. It has to do with the survivability of the corporate uh, uh, corporation. And therefore, the, we need to take uh, have the comp uh, Korean business to take more concrete actions to achieve the objective of sustainability. I'd like to end my debate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lee Young-hee has just uh, um, given a discussion. I'm very curious to what the Mr. Lee Shiu of the Postgres to say. My name is Ishiu, and I'm working at POSCO, and it's a great honor for me to join you in this meaningful and prestigious occasion. So the past year, POSCO gave a lot of uh, thoughts uh, to the plan to achieve uh, carbon neutrality. And also, so, uh, we just came up with a plan and strategy, and the, the plan and strategy uh, passed at our BOD meeting, and that's how my company came up with the 2050 Carbon Neutrality Declaration. So we just came up with a carbon emission reduction target uh, with the milestones of 2030 uh, by 20%, 2040 by 50%. And also, we are planning to provide low-carbon products. And if uh, the low-carbon products are provided by POSCO, and if they are used by our end users, then it will also make a contribution to the reduction of a greenhouse gas emission, including in carbon. Recently, we were asked, asked uh, often about how POSCO uh, can drastically um, 
decided to declare 2050 carbon neutrality. Uh, given that, it will be extremely difficult to cut down greenhouse gas emission in, in the steel making process. If I brief you on the background of the declaration of Pascal's 2050 carbon neutrality, there have been uh, the strong uh, the request from our global investors and our uh, clients in terms of uh, funding and that uh, my company needs to have and also uh, in terms of uh, the satisfaction of our clients and customers, POSCO uh, actually needed to move toward the carbon neutrality direction. Uh, as we all know, it's very important to meet the request of global investors, including the TCFD and the request of our clients. During uh, the business discussion with our global um, investors and our clients, we just realized that, that the world is moving toward uh, the response to the climate change. And also, uh, we were desperate enough to review uh, the steel manufacturing process to cut down uh, the carbon emission being generated over the course of steel making. I would like to talk about the realistic or practical difficulties with regard to uh, the achievement of carbon neutrality. As you may know, it's so difficult to cut down greenhouse gas uh, emission uh, in steel making process. I believe that the carbon neutrality should go beyond a simple catchy phrase or motto. Let me take an example of a steel making process, which is quite important um, in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emission. We actually need to uh, heat cox uh, at a, a temperature uh, higher than 1,100 degrees Celsius before for uh, putting it into the furnace to generate electricity. Before put it into a furnace, we actually need to cool uh, the heated cox down. And the nitrogen is utilized for the cooling process. And actually uh, the heat generated from the cooling process is also utilized and recycled for the operation of engine. And that a process or the recycling is uh, possible thanks to the equipment called the CDQ coke dry punching system. And actually, this system has uh, the impact of reducing one thousand uh, sorry one hundred forty thousand tons of CO two annually. And also, uh, we just feel the need for uh, the technological development at this uh, unprecedented speed. And also, we came up with uh, the conclusion that in order to achieve uh, such a target, uh, the efforts need to be made at, at the national level. And as I've mentioned before, there are certain uh, reasons why there is so uh, a large volume of greenhouse gas emission being made over, I mean, in steel making process. It's because we use coal. Uh, we actually need to separate oxygen from the iron ore and actually we've used coal or the uh, I mean carbon in coal to uh, separate the oxygen from um, iron ore and that's why uh, there have been a lot of uh, greenhouse gas emissions generated over the course of uh, iron making we all know that only carbon and hydrogen can uh, separate oxygen uh, from iron ore In order to achieve a POSCO's 2050 carbon neutrality target, we actually need to realize hydrogen reduction steel making technology. Carbon neutrality it depends on the commercialization of hydrogen based reduction iron making process and the application of carbon capture utilization and storage. So, 
we need 3.7 million uh, tons of green hydrogen and also uh, that uh, much amount of uh, green electricity to uh, actually uh, run and uh, still making a factory uh, process as uh, uh, it is. I believe uh, that um, the efforts need to be made at the national government, such as um, providing uh, the establishment of um, green uh, hydrogen and green power infrastructure at the government level and the commercialization of uh, the hydrogen reduction steel technology uh, at uh, enterprise level. We are talking about corporate responsibility for carbon neutrality, and we also talk about how greenhouse gas emission can be reduced at business sites or manufacturing sites. I believe, um, actually, at the business site, we can have a different perspective. We need to see the situation from the lens of enterprises. I'm talking about still making industry that my company engages itself in. We can develop and produce uh, low carbon products and also we can do better management of byproducts. So we can take a different perspective and come up with different uh, the measures uh, to make a contributions to our society to uh, achieve uh, carbon neutrality. For example, POSCO has developed high strength vehicle steel plate which is a low-carbon uh, steel uh, sheet. Um, thus, uh, increasing the fuel efficiency of uh, motor vehicles. And another uh, case in point is the electric uh, vehicle uh, related material. We developed the high energy efficiency electric steel sheet, and also POSCO successfully developed the secondary battery uh, uh, material to make a contribution to the realization of a carbon neutrality. So it seems that uh, the focus of industries uh, uh, is uh, what kind of movements or actions are taken by enterprises to make low carbon products, uh, what kind of uh, contributions are made enterprises to carbon neutrality. Costco is aiming at uh, making contribution to social greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction by providing low carbon products and uh, we have a plan to continue to, uh, to do so. Th with this, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, so we have heard um, from the panelists that represents the business group and also manufacturers. So we would like to now uh, listen to someone who has a investor perspective. Uh, Mr. Park sung yeon I give the microphone to you. Yes, uh, my name is Park sung yeon uh, and I am affiliated to Xinan Financial the Group, uh, and I'm responsible for CC, CSSO activities. Uh, so as a the financial expert, I always look at the numbers, uh, and uh, let me begin with this number, 728 million versus zero. What we have on the left is um, the carbon emitted as of 2019 by Korea Zero is what Korea is uh, going to emit uh, in 2050. And uh, many challenges uh, need to be overcome in order to arrive at uh, zero emission. And uh, I like to uh, talk about uh, the investor perspective from the financial industry, uh, what um, the views of the financial industry experts are on this issue. In the Europe, I'm a member of the Financial Initiative at the um, environmental program of the, the United Nations. Uh, and uh, 
Uh, there is a special alliance in the, the United Nations. Uh, all the, the asset management companies, insurance companies uh, um, under the alliance have uh, declared that they will go net, net zero. And uh, since uh, we are an investor, uh, we actually uh, move around the capital within the capital markets. Uh, we believe that um, carbon emission need to be reduced at our partners level as well. Uh, that is the uh, essence of the net zero that proclaimed by financial institutions. Uh, for large companies, financial companies in the Europe, uh, they are saying that they are going to um, go net zero in 2050. What it means is that in 2050, um, in 2050, European financial institutions are going to stop extending loans to companies that emit carbon. And we uh, announced a net zero banking as well at the financial, the Shinan Financial Group. Uh, uh, all the major, the five uh, conglomerates have uh, in Korea have uh, pledged to arriving at net zero emissions in 2050. So this is a trend uh, that we are going to see it, uh, strongly take place. Uh, and uh, our challenge is that basically to the reduce carbon emissions at uh, the corporate level. Uh, and. Um, this is not uh, mandated by the law, and uh, why are financial institutions uh, uh, taking such um, aggressive stance when it comes to the net zero financing, net zero banking? Um, and I think this has to do with all the side effects that, that we are witnessing because of the uh, climate change situation. And uh, it's affecting us at a larger scale than with the anticipated. In uh, Europe, um, we uh, have uh, concerns because uh, we uh, believe that, that uh, uh, the North Pole sea level rises, uh, the, the melting of the sea, the ice is very significant. And if this continues to happen, then the UK is going to suffer from severe the, uh, the, the cold, cold um, the weather, and uh, some of uh, the European countries may see that they, uh, the sea level rise is going to uh, affect them significantly. They, the, their territories are going to be inundated with water, and. Um, so many countries are the saying that they are willing to actively adopt the sea bomb by imposing taxes for the carbon adjustment. And so, so we have to think about what um, the companies are going to, where companies are going to stand 10 years from now. Would they be able to continue health, stay healthy ten, in 10 years? This is what we want to pay attention to. Why are we adopting uh, the uh, carbon neutrality. This is for survival of uh, their businesses. Uh, we need to manage the risk in order for us to stay afloat. That is the perspective of the financial industry. We look at the transition risk of the businesses uh, and uh, we uh, want to control the emission level at the, the corporate sector. We want to provide adequate support to, to the corporate sector so that they can make a successful transition. We want to provide uh, the right advice to the corporate sector and that is what we are trying to do. And uh, basically the net zero banking that we are uh, pursuing has to do with reducing carbon emissions. Uh, and secondly, we want to look at uh, the pro-environment financing activities of the corporations. Uh, we want to focus on the transition financing. So what is transition financing? Uh, transition financing, uh, um, you have to look at the energy sector. Energy sector, the look at, um, take uh, the, the uh, transition very seriously, but uh, and reduce the carbon emissions very seriously. But uh, for other industries, uh, things are quite uh, different. Uh, I think uh, they have about five percent readiness level compared to, to the energy sector, and uh, so we, we need uh, the companies. Uh, we need to have the companies taking more aggressive action. They need to, to take a stronger stance and uh, transition finance. Uh, uh, need to be adopted for the corporations, uh, and uh, we believe that we need to provide support, uh, financial support, uh, 1,000 trillion won worth of support need to be provided from the financial sector to the uh, corporate sector. And the companies need to know well about the technology that they need to adopt.
not. They need to establish a low carbon mechanism. This is a challenge that we must overcome. And the financial sector need to take, do the, um, take the right action, the adequate action, because we believe that we are the key player in the, the success of um, the successful in the success of the transition made to be made by the corporations. On the next slide, what I want to say is that there are three the, uh, things you have to pay attention to. First, it's the measurement. And uh, measurement means uh, that uh, you look at the impact uh, um, the, on the, of the companies, uh, and it's about uh, the controlling of the emission level and so on. And uh, if we are to reduce uh, carbon emissions at the company's uh, corporate level, uh, we have to focus on the, the high emitters activities. In other words, uh, we have uh, we uh, do businesses with many uh, businesses, but if you look at the top 50 companies, they take up about 82.8 percent of all our uh, emissions. And uh, so the, this uh, top five uh, uh, corporations uh, play a very huge role. And you have to think about the carbon intensity, CI level as well. And there are many, there are many business participants here today. Uh, but if you look at the CI, the, the carbon intensity level, this is going to be a, a highly influential in us making assessment uh, about extending loans to, to the businesses. So please bear that in mind. Um, CI level is going to be very, very important in the future. There are a lot of things that to be done. Uh, even if you breathe, you're going to emit uh, carbon to, uh, CO2. So what can you do? To, uh, I think uh, uh, offsetting is going to be very important. Uh, so we need to make a pro-environment uh, investments. Uh, if we can suppress carbon emissions uh, through various technology, for example, solar energy, wind energy, these are the basic essentials. Uh, and uh, also, we can we hope to use the wind wave technology, the wind uh, the waves uh, for the on uh, the, the ocean waves um, the, uh, it could be quite uh, beneficial the, in this uh, regard at the force of the wave or the wave power generation and we are currently um, um, have intentions uh, to provide more to, um, to develop stronger relations with companies that looks at these new technologies. And uh, now I'd like to talk about what we do at the affiliate level. At the Shinan Bank side, uh, we are more active in extending um, loans uh, for the pro-environment activities. And we look at the ESG scores in assessing companies. For the asset company, uh, we look at the brand Docker case. Uh, we send letters. We engage with our customers very actively. And uh, for the last page, when it comes to net zero banking, this is not just a declaration. This is an essential element for the survival of the banking sector. What you cannot measure, you can't manage. I take the quote from the Peter Drucker. Uh, so it's uh, it, the issue has to do with how accurately will you measure carbon emissions, and this is going to be the, a determining factor in us uh, being able to achieve a carbon neutrality. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. And since we have heard all the, the, the presentations by the four, three panelists, uh, we are the also in mindful of the online audience. Um, we have YouTube uh, being uh, YouTube streaming service being provided, and uh, we will uh, collect the questions uh, from the online audience. We'd like to pose the question to uh, the panelists uh, through this opportunity. Tim, yes. it seems that we have a question about a company ASK, and it seems that the question is directed to Vice uh, Chairman. Uh, Lee of SKENS, and um, since uh, Vice Chairman Lee mentioned um, the suppliers in his presentation, the question is asking how the SK is planning to cooperate with the suppliers. We are talking about net zero, and the SKENS actually came up with the net zero declaration two months ago. We all know that uh, there are one to three, uh, three scopes of net zero. So. 
and scope uh, three is a net zero, including um, the supply uh, supply chain, and also the product that we produce and sell is being consumed by the consumers. And actually, even that stage is uh, considered in scope three net zero. So it means uh, that uh, not only we produce net zero products, but also the uh, products we purchase or the materials we purchase should be produced in net zero process. And Apple just came up with uh, its uh, corporate policy that it would uh, purchase the net zero uh, the suppliers' uh, products only. Net uh, zero is a perfectly carbon free product or RE100 uh, the compliant products is a very uh, strict uh, criteria. But I believe that Apple uh, didn't uh, have uh, many choices but to uh, come up with this strict criteria uh, because Apple's clients are uh, kind of uh, the major uh, companies. And actually, uh, if we uh, take a look at the Korean companies' cases, we have very small and medium-sized suppliers working with and collaborating with uh, big uh, businesses. And that's why um, the situation is quite difficult for uh, the Korean companies. There are three players, uh, SMEs and, and the large uh, companies that, that uh, have business transactions with those SMEs. And the third player is the uh, government. And when it comes to the division of role uh, between these three players, I'm not quite sure what should be the right answer. But still, I know clearly that there are three players uh, that should join their hands and cooperate with one another to achieve the goal of net zero. And the big businesses need to cooperate with their suppliers, the SMEs, to achieve a complete net zero. And also the big businesses should take a certain level of responsibilities to make sure uh, that the SMEs, their suppliers also abide by net zero criteria. But it will be a very daunting task uh, uh, for the big businesses because uh, the big businesses have a large number of suppliers that they work with. So it would be very difficult for them to monitor and guide uh, each and every small and medium-sized suppliers toward the direction of uh, carbon neutrality. And it seems that uh, big businesses need to give a lot of thoughts and make a strenuous efforts uh, toward that direction. And I believe the government came up with ambitious uh, the goal of a net zero by 2050, and the government needs to make a relevant investment to achieve uh, that uh, goal. It needs to consider uh, how it can share the burden of small and medium businesses uh, in their uh, way toward a net zero. Can you uh, take a next question, please? It seems that we have uh, questions incoming. I will read the question on behalf of online uh, participants. It seems that social uh, greenhouse gas reduction um, is a quite uh, the term which is unfamiliar to uh, me. So I would like to know how uh, this kind of social uh, greenhouse gas emission can be made uh, through uh, your products. I think this question is directed to our speaker from POSCO. CSD or double uh, I just came up with the guidelines for social greenhouse gas emission uh, uh, since 2003. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, there are very active discussions going on how to achieve uh, the greenhouse gas emission uh, from the lens of uh, social greenhouse gas uh, emission. It seems uh, that around 13% uh, of greenhouse gas emission is made in transport sector. It seems uh, that the transporting companies need to work on cut down in their greenhouse gas emission. And the most effective measure uh, uh, known to our society for the reduction of uh, the greenhouse gas emission in the transport sector is to increase the fuel efficiency. And in order to increase the fuel efficiency, we need to make a car body lighter uh, than as it is right now. We And also we need to create better engines for uh, auto 
mobiles to enhance the fuel efficiency. I believe uh, that's uh, the job uh, that the relevant uh, the companies, the manufacturing companies need to do. And also, when it comes to the greenhouse gas emission in other industrial sector, I believe that relevant companies in um, a specific sector and the consumers need to cooperate and need to work together. And another point that I want to make is how we can uh, make the relevant um, quantitative measurement with regard to the reduction of greenhouse gas emission, uh, particularly uh, in the area of social uh, greenhouse gas emission. I'm not asking uh, that uh, the social greenhouse gas emission contributed by companies like POSCO should be recognized. Rather, we are focusing on making contribution to the greenhouse gas emission of our society through uh, social uh, greenhouse gas emission. We just want to fulfill our uh, corporate responsibility as a member of our uh, community. The WBCS, uh, I've mentioned what kind of moves are made. Uh, in the case of our neighboring country, Japan, it also came up with the guidelines for uh, the social greenhouse gas emission. And also there is a comprehensive and uh, broad discussions being made uh, on the social greenhouse gas reduction. Um, to the best of my knowledge, KWBCSD and the Steelmakers Association here in Korea started their discussion on social uh, greenhouse gas uh, reduction guidelines. Thank you very much. Can you take one last question? We have just one more question uh, from the, the online audience. This is a question for the Mr. Park Sung of the Shinang Financial Group. We have had uh, microfinancing in the past. How is it different from the ESG financing? Yes, we do get a question like that a lot. We had the green finance, we had microfinancing, we have innovative financing. The government policy changes every time, and then we had launched new products related to that. And ESG and net zero finance is a little different from those products because we have we come from different motivation and uh, the green financing, innovative financing, creative financing, these are financing product instruments that uh, the government uh, initiated development of. Uh, but uh, when it comes to ESG financing uh, or the uh, net zero financing, um, it, uh, these products uh, came about because we came to develop an understanding about the situation of the companies. So we have more than 500 assets. Uh, uh, 500 um, trillion won in asset um, being managed, and therefore we are aware of the risk that uh, we uh, are exposed to. So in the past, uh, the government took the lead, uh, but uh, these days uh, we believe that uh, we have, are facing an urgent, uh, 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 the urgent challenge, uh, a daunting challenge. Uh, we must have uh, corporations to actually take actions. In particular, for the transition uh, financing, uh, we believe that uh, we provide a direct um, support to the uh, corporations, and, and we are clearly aware of the role to be played by the financial industry uh, to make sure that zero is achieved by the businesses. We understand that we ha have influence with the capital that we have, and the kind of action that the corporations take is uh, critical for the economy. So we do believe that there is a uh, uh, very uh, high um, the, the level of responsibility to be borne by the financial sector. We're about 10 minutes away, and uh, actually hours are given about 10 minutes uh, for the closing remarks. But uh, I believe that you'd like to hear more from the panelists. So if uh, um, you don't you wouldn't mind, I'd like to pose some questions to the panelists, and I'd like to be very brief with my closing remark. And uh, so, let me begin with Mr. Park in the reverse order. I'll give you one minute or a minute and a half, uh, perhaps, uh, for your response. Uh, I uh, was always interested about this point uh, for the financial industry. From companies' uh, point of view, you uh, attract investment, and then the financial industry would exert influence and right, uh, the pressure, right? Uh, 
and what is the kind of action you anticipate from the corporate sector? Because you exert the pressure and the companies will respond, right? But uh, under the commercial code, there is like a limitation of what you can do. And uh, you don't have a lot of means to resort to in terms of exerting pressure. What do you expect the companies to do? Uh, when in terms of the engagement, the BlackRock uh, um, case is really important because the BlackRock uh, tried to engage with many major listed companies, PCF or the, the uh, disclosure requirements. Uh, these are the things uh, that were in anticipated uh, for the corporate sector. I think we are in the similar vein. Uh, so for engagement, uh, we believe that uh, since uh, we extend loans, uh, we can be very aggressive. Uh, in engaging uh, the uh, businesses, but uh, uh, companies may be concerned that um, we may uh, um, not extend loans to the companies if we, uh, they don't follow our instructions. But I don't think this is the case. Uh, we want them to measure on their own, and we want them to review, and we want to provide know-how to the companies in doing so. And uh, we would like to uh, look at the alliance, global alliance, global initiatives, and we'd like to provide adequate support for the businesses. So this is more of an alliance. Uh, it's not as if one side is exerting pressure on the other. Uh, we're not saying that uh, there's a certain target level to be achieved um, or else uh, we are going to stop extending loans to the businesses. We're anticipating companies to, to exert the best efforts and uh, um, the, the stopping uh, the, the um, not extending loan would be like uh, the last resort. It's not something uh, that we are going to do unless, it, unless uh, uh, certain things are not achieved. Uh, and uh, for the SMEs, uh, it's not that, that we're going to be harsh on them. There are about uh, top 50 companies. Uh, and for the top 50 companies, they will be actively engaging. That is what is important. Uh, thank you very much. And now I have a question for Mr. Leo Posco. While you're working at the Carbon Neutrality Committee, I just uh, came across different perspectives uh, between the government and the enterprises. Uh, the government came up with uh, the goal of cutting down uh, greenhouse gas emissions drastically uh, within 10 years. However, the companies or the enterprises have a different um, opinions or perspective. They believe that they need to have a long-term perspective, a long-term plan to cut down their greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, what do you think about uh, the different stance. I believe that's uh, uh, one of uh, the biggest pain points that we uh, as a company have. So the energy efficiency in the manufacturing industry here in Korea is quite um, outstanding and high. And it means that, in other words, there is very little room for uh, the reduction of greenhouse gas emission in the Korean manufacturing industry. But still, we need to do our utmost uh, uh, to cut down uh, the greenhouse gas emission, uh, such as optimize our manufacturing process and replace the carbon, uh, the material uh, with other uh, materials. But still, as I mentioned before, there are uh, certain limitations. I'm not saying we cannot do that, or I'm not saying no uh, to the government proposal. We continue to work on uh, the measures uh, to cut down greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, but still, uh, I believe that the companies need to challenge uh, uh, to uh, realize uh, technological innovation in a more drastic way. And also, I would like to propose uh, the government uh, that the government um, should uh, shift its focus from regulation to support uh, toward uh, the enterprises. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, and this last question is um, goes to Lee hyung -hee, Mr. Lee hyung -hee of the SK Supex. People ask me, 
um, food, um, I, they, I believe, is the exemplar company. I always say it's SK Group. It's not because uh, SK enjoys a wide media coverage. It's because it has internal system. I think uh, SK is most advanced in having it uh, included in its internal system. So I, as I like to ask the top management in charge of this uh, responsibility. This is not something you can achieve by the uh, direct order of um, this uh, chairman. So it, you have to go through various uh, decision-making processes procedures and there's like a friction uh, and there's also internal resistance uh, people pretend to know things and try to stop you so how do you uh, get things going uh, that's what I'd like to ask you yes SK has done a lot uh, do we do our job um, in a splendid manner uh, I have some reservations uh, to that kind of idea I want to do well that's what I can say last year in the November, at the end of November, we made an R200 announcement, uh, and uh, two months ago, we made a net zero announcement. Uh, and uh, we had a tea time conversations. If you remembered, I said that uh, uh, many CEOs uh, find this very challenging within our group. Uh, for example, the, they may have to suffer some setback uh, next year, but uh, they'll make sure that things are going to be all a lot better for other top leaders to, to come in 10 years' time. And uh, not many CEOs uh, share that kind of idea, almost none, I would say. For example, for a big business, uh, the chairman's idea is really important, and uh, um, all the constituents of uh, the organizations, they need to come to an agreement. Uh, about two years ago, I think, um, we were able to uh, carry out internal training. We did some consensus building, and uh, we had a lengthy time. We spent uh, uh, many hours uh, to build the consensus. Uh, and we have uh, the internal online the platform called My Son. And um, we have a lot of contents uploaded there, about 300, uh, 400 different types of uh, uh, the contents uh, have been uploaded in the platform and our uh, executives and staff uh, had uh, list, uh, taken the course. It's a mandatory requirement. Uh, so I think um, on average, uh, uh, 10 hours. Uh, um, our staff, executives and staff, spent about 10 hours um, taking that course. Uh, so uh, having completed the course, I think people kind of de developed a general understanding that such actions are required. And uh, many people uh, um, pay attention to this because this directly is directly related with that future. So there is a consensus within our organizations and uh, from the top level, I think uh, this is something that CEO has to agree upon and something that CEO uh, pursues, uh, take action uh, um, under his own initiative. Uh, so chairmen so within our affiliates, uh, they need to provide active support. Uh, and uh, the top managements need to, to engage with uh, the staff. Uh, so there needs to be like close uh, communication between the top um, to all the way to the bottom uh, for any action to be effective. And I think uh, we foster such environment. I think uh, two years of efforts had kind of led to this conducive environment. But are we perfect? Are things perfect at the SK Group? I had some reservations on that. Uh, but we are uh, continuing to exert efforts. Uh, uh, we feel that these are very uh, difficult challenges, uh, but uh, R200 uh, needs to be carried out to the fullness and we'll be halfway there in realizing that zero. So we'll start with the R200 initiatives and then we'll develop new technologies so that we can arrive at net zero. This is the methodology that we pursue. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to close an uh, enterprise session within one minute. and. This is the last session of two-day forum, um, the enterprise session, and um, in other sessions, actually, we uh, including in the enterprise session, we've uh, discussed the topic of net zero. And net zero is such a daunting task ahead of us because we need to uh, come up with uh, the achievement of net zero without uh, any sufficient tools on our uh, hand. Uh, let us think about what happened uh, this time last year. There was not a single expert who said that it would take less than a year to develop a vaccine for COVID-19 virus. But uh, look uh, where we are. I was inoculated with a COVID-19 vaccine um, yesterday, 
and I'm looking forward to having a better uh, uh, days uh, after being inoculated. So what I can tell you is uh, that if we join our hands and if there is a successful cooperation, then nothing is impossible. We can achieve the net zero. Uh, the stock price of Madonna uh, in the early uh, uh, last year was uh, cheaper than $20, but now it just skyrocketed. And what I want to tell you uh, is that actually the stock price is 300. But the thing is that we need to cooperate and actually the relevant reward should be provided to motivate enterprises to make uh, movements and take actions. With this, I'd like to conclude my uh, moderation and uh, moderating uh, of this session. Thank you. I'd like to uh, ask you to give a big round of applause to the moderator and the presenters of our last session, enterprise session. Thank you very much. You may go back to your uh, seats right now. Uh, through uh, the enterprise session, uh, we came to realize and came to learn what are the tasks ahead of our enterprises to make a contribution to net zero. Um, it's, I believe it's very important for um, each stakeholder of our society uh, to understand what kind of roles uh, uh, um, they need to play. I would like to wrap up our um, last session with, with a visual thinking picture or slide. Um, actually, we've had this great visual thinking slides for all the sessions that we have had for uh, today and yesterday. Please give a big round of applause to this visual thinking slide. With this, I would like to wrap up uh, our last session of uh, Jungsan Forum 2021 Enterprises session. We started Jungsan Forum yesterday with the cultural opening and ceremony. And now it's time for us to wrap up today forum um, after completing our last session. Uh, the, the Jungsan Forum 2021 has been held under the theme of our lives in a sustainable environment for humanity with us. It's time for us to look back on two days that uh, we have spent with a great passion. And it's time for us to have uh, the closing ceremony of uh, Jungsan Forum 2021. Despite uh, the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, we had active and enthusiastic participation um, um, of online users. We had 9,872 online participants and 1,023 actually registered in advance. And 9,800 people have joined this session through YouTube channel. I'd like to take this opportunity once again to extend my appreciation to the, all the participants uh, uh, for their active and enthusiastic participation. And the opening ceremony uh, was composed of Arirang performance, meeting technology-based VR performance, and, and the speech made by uh, the young activists uh, for climate action, and also uh, the govern governor uh, of uh, Gangwon province and the county mayor joined their hands to make a promise uh, for carbon uh, neutrality. And also we had a keynote speech uh, provided by uh, Professor Jeffrey Sachs and Professor Che Professor Che uh, uh, of uh, Yihua Women's University gave a, a special lecture under the title of Ecological Tone for the Post-Pandemic Life and also we had a plenary session as the last session of day one. Uh, also today, uh, the second day of Jungsan Forum started with a talk concert session and also, uh, it was followed by Earth session, environment session, uh, Kangwon session, and enterprise session. And each and every session was meaningful, and we've had a lot of uh, great discussions. Uh, despite uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we had uh, such a great two day here in Cheongsan, and I'm looking forward to uh, having a Cheongsan Forum uh, 2022 uh, next year. And I believe that we'll get together uh, in person 
uh, when we have Chungsung Forum 2022 uh, next year. Now, I'd like to play a video clip uh, to uh, sum up what happened for uh, today, uh, for yesterday and today. I will be looking forward to meeting you uh, in Chungsung Forum 2022 next year. Thank you very much. Well, um, we uh, um, have been holding uh, the Chongsan Forum at very dif uh, difficult uh, times uh, this year and last year. Chongsan Forum is a leading forum in the Korea that brings about changes in the Korean society. Through the Chongsan Forum, we do believe uh, that we'll be able to develop better, better understanding about the impact of climate change on our society. McDonald's Korea pledges to uh, make uh, more contributions uh, to uh, the Korean society through our ESG efforts, uh, ESG activities. Uh, because of the COVID uh, outbreak, uh, not many people are able to join us today live on the uh, conference room, but uh, because we have an online conference, we are able to, uh, to have a larger audience. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. Sustainable the planet and the living together the, with the, under the sustainable the climate and environment. Uh, I hope to see you the next year again. Thank you very much for your time.